Hello, I'm Tim and this is Tim BSE and I'm back in New York Harbor again by popular demand. You see, all those of you that have been demanding that I do more videos in New York Harbor, uh, I'd love to have you think that that's why I'm here, but truth be known, I have to work over. Paquita's getting really expensive. <laughs> anyway, so we are here in Gowanus. I'm on a, another 4200 for a week. And things have really changed since I was here last time. Look at this big building they put up alongside us. This used to be an oil terminal a long time. If you look over here, this is a whole new facility. None of that was here the last time I was here. This is our little facility over here. We used to tie the tugs up over there and put barges here. But we're over here today to uh, retrieve a uh, couple pallets of line and a new pump. There's our big engineer. Got a couple guys over here on deck. And uh, so they're gonna have all kinds of work to do. Maybe I'll give them a hand. Who knows, maybe I'll be in their way. But we'll figure it out. So anyway, thank you guys so much for watching and uh, hope you like what we have coming for you for the next few while. So I had an opportunity to film some stuff that you don't, I don't always show. In this particular case, uh, us picking up supplies. The company I work for has different ports or offices, you know, where they have warehouses and support crew and that sort of stuff. On the West Coast, and Gulf Coast, and all up and down the East Coast. And of course, you know that uh, we're in Puerto Rico, but we don't really have a we don't really have a port there. But anyway. <clears throat> What will happen is, in this case, we had some 200-foot big lines that were uh, at the end of their useful light, and so they had ordered some new ones. So, you, not just taking the new ones, but uh, we got to take the old ones off, and then, uh, what do they say, many hands marks, makes the work go quickly. So we all get this on board. You, you may have seen me, uh, somebody handed something up to me and I put it in the wheelhouse. Those are actually the certificates. We can't just grab a line and put it on the boat. Every boat has to have a certificate with its braking strength and manufacturing type and all that sort of stuff on everything for liability. But also, uh, we had a uh, some other supplies show up. That, you know, I say show up. They had been ordered a long time ago, but they had an opportunity to get in here. One of those is what we call a diesel trash pump and this is a diesel engine that has a great big we call it a trash pump not because it pumps trash but because it doesn't need to really have a strainer on it can pump anything so uh if the boat is sinking you can stick stick this down in the bilge and you're good to go so our mission today is to pick up this barge over here and although they have written in the computer that they are done with product they are not released and I don't know if that means they're doing samples still on it, but it doesn't really matter because even if they're done with their work, I don't know if you can see it on the video or not, but the boom is still around the barge. So we're gonna have to wait for the line, the boom guys to come and remove the boom and then we'll pull that out. And we're right at the hop of the tide with the tide coming from here and moving this way. So we need to get out without taking out the back of the dock or landing on the other barge that's right over here. So. Uh, We'll see what happens. And you can see how much the tide, uh, it, you know, a good indicator of the tide is you can see that the boom is pressed right up against the barge. And so that means that uh, we're gonna have everything going that way. So we'll see how it works. And after a crazy amount of time waiting, Uh, 
ahead on my Ford engine to keep the swing going. Take it out of gear, put the rudder midship. Now I'm going to back on my Ford engine to try to get more on the center. There we go, that's bringing it over. I'm not sure if we go out of four or five. Too, right? It doesn't matter either way. 
Okay, I'll call the ship and see what they want. Very good. Okay, two, two, two. All right, we're good. All that's good. I'm gonna shut the steering off here and turn the steering on up above. Right in the log real quick. Okay. Big ship here taking off. Or not taking off, but going by down the kills. And we're going up there. I hope they have the air conditioning on because it's kind of hot out here. Good sign. All right, things are looking our way. So now, get you all set here. I'll go ahead and wrap it up and check it out. And turn on the steering. Okay. Test the steering Good. back and forth. Good. Turn the radio down a little bit. Okay. Throttles. Check the throttles. That one works. That one works. Clutch one engine, so whatever you do, just leave me one line to work in on. The tanker run will know what I'm talking about. Head back. Head back. Head back. Head back. Head back. I heard you. Um, there is one line they gotta get someone down on the dock to take off because it's so long. All right, is that something they're gonna do, or they want me to make the call? Hold on, let me find out. Yeah, I'll talk to you later. All right. I guess you make the call. There are both out here. All right, very good. Stand by. All right, so they have one long lead there that they need a tanker right. for. I mean, they need a dockman for. And if people say, why don't they just get down on the dock and do it themselves? They're not allowed to do that. So uh, a lot of people have good ideas at home that don't really work well here in theory. I'll make a security call. Security call! Touchdown! Preparing to let lines go. Uh, Buckeye Bayonne. Partial load of oil barge. Uh, and push. And we'll be headed outbound the kennels. Bound for Staple. So now we sit here and wait for a camera. Looks like our man just showed up. Okay, I'm checking traffic around us. We got somebody inbound coming our way. He's the guy who's coming in going to go be going right to my berth. So I thought that he shouldn't be an issue because I can't get out. Or he can't get in until I get out, that's what I'm trying to say. <laughs> Alright, so Mike, it looks like we're falling off the dock, is that correct? So now I've just put the rudder hard right. And I'm still clutch ahead on my port engine. And at this point, that doesn't really matter that much. 
Um, I'm just trying to hold us in position so that we don't fall too far off the dock while they're taking the lines in. I t told them to wait, and to, to, that I'd be working on one line, pushing ahead on one line. Um, our particular deckhand, the tankermen are well seasoned, but our particular deckhand here is very new, just recently got signed off. And uh, he seems very, uh, from the reports I've heard from the guys on the boat, he does very well. And uh, he's been very good about communicating with me. So we'll see how it all plays out. All right, Mike, remember, don't let the last one go until you let me know, because I'm pushing into it. Roger that. Traffic from the Magathy, we are underway at this time. Very good, thank you. Stop, go ahead, take in the last line. Last, this line. Take it up now, you down to one line. Go change it up. Yep, go ahead and take it in. Stop. Now I'm putting it ahead. Yeah, he caught up the barrel. 
bring the starboard engine up so we have two engines ahead probably about half right now and now it's still rotating but I'm going to ease my rudder and that means I'm going to bring my rudder back to midship because the momentum in the barge is still going to have it you see the, the, the rudder is back to midship but the barge is still turning all the time good uh, say again good <laughs> great <laughs> thank you all right now I write in the log and we call this the smooth uh, the, the rough log there's a rough log and a smooth log the rough log is something that we just write notes down in so like I remember what time we sailed and then we'll take this paper down to the smooth log, which is actually computerized, and enter in the information from there. So right here, we're just gonna run over to uh, the ship, get alongside the ship. Not a whole lot for you to see here, so I'm gonna shut the camera off and save the battery. I just figured out, <laughs> you know what, we don't have that far to run. A lot of you guys like to see all the things that happen here in New York right now. The Staten Island Ferry is going across, gonna cross our bow. Uh, we are coming out of the kills on the Con Hook Range, and we're going to be heading over to Stapleton Anchorage. And so what I'm going to do is, unless something happens, I'm going to speed everything up. So you guys won't have to sit through it, but at least you can see stuff. Yeah. Yeah.
the ship. We're doing uh, just about eight knots, so I'm going to start slowing down. Uh, you can see the direction that the ship is pointed. All the other ones are pointed as well. And this should tell us that uh, the tide, the wind is setting us this way. So as I slow down, even though we're carrying a good load, the t we'll be working against the tide. So it should, we, the tide won't continue to carry us is what I'm trying to say. So. All right, they're down to seven knots here. The ship's getting closer all the time. My plan is to go up to get the, I, the tankers usually have their connection in the middle of the tank, uh, in the middle of the boat, which is great because uh, some of the container ships have them way aft. It's a hard thing to land on. But we should be able to land on the flat side of the tanker there, but we're going to go forward and put up a couple for, uh, forward lines and then use that tide that's pull, that's keeping the ship in position to fall back on our lines and get into position that way. At least that's the hope. And Lord knows I haven't done this since the, since the last time I've done it. <laughs> okay, so now we're down to 5.5, taking the, taking the engines right out of gear. Trying to slow down all the time. I've said this in other videos, but you can see the mast on the barge. I line that up with things on the shore. And if they stay constant, we're not sliding one way or the other. But if the mast moves one way or the other, you can see where you're where the you're getting set and drift and where it's putting you off or the wind is putting you off. Okay, so now we're down to four knots. Uh, you know what? I'm gonna keep rolling because it's uh, I'm putting two back clutch again, so we're minimal power on two engines ahead. And uh, I'm just doing this so that uh, I won't lose all my momentum. It looks like it's slowing down wonderfully for me. I see guys on deck of the barge. They're working the manifold. Hopefully the guys on the deck of the barge will communicate with them and tell them. Uh, you're about uh, 50 feet of Very good. He says we're 50 feet in closing, which uh, I would concur. I think his numbers, he's a new guy, but those numbers seem solid to me. So now I'm going I'm to point right at the bow. So our bow points at his bow. I'm turning my other radios down because I don't really need to talk to other people now other than my uh, guys on deck. I'm in neutral. We're coasting. We're down to 3.4 knots. 20 feet. Very good. And just to let you know, I have the... Right now I have the rudder left, but I'm bringing the rudder midship now. Everything's looking good. There's a man on the ship that's going up to the forward position. All right, the right there with a the four or five is on side of All right, good deal. So we'll go up there where that guy is up on the bow and give him a line, then fall back, all right? Roger that. So now we're doing 2.6. I'm going to start slowing down because we're uh, moving. All right, you're about uh, 15 and closer. All right, how much farther ahead do you want to come? 25 feet ahead. Very good. Okay, we're doing 1.9 knots. I've got two astern and clutch now. That should get us at least 25 feet ahead. Now I'm going to put my rudder hard over to the left because I see the bow falling in. So I've got my starboard engine ahead, clutch, my port engine right, astern. You're holding about two feet and closer. All right. So now, now what I've done is just given it a little shot to pull that bow off. And now I've gone all uh, stop. The guys on the board are not ready, so I'm putting don't have nothing to throw down. All right, no problem. So now I've put my rudder hard. About uh, 10 feet falling off. All right, I put my rudder hard so right, and and it looks like the stern is closer than the bow. So I'm going to stop us right here and give a little twist to bring that bow in and check us up. And now we're static right here. Battery still lasting. Right, the battery uh, nope, battery's still going. Closing on your yogis all the way down. All right, good deal. And we should, is this where he wants to be or do you want me to go forward? Fall back. Okay. Oh man, he has to throw a line up. Those guys won't throw a line down. That's crazy. Yeah, he's just in there smiling. Yeah, normally the ships, I shouldn't say normally, the ships right, always throw a line down. Yogi, you still got another uh, two feet on your turn to touch up. Very good. So I guess the guys on the ship are not throwing anything down, so our guys are trying to throw. Oh, look at that, he got it up there. Nice shot, man. I want you on my softball team. <laughs> That's a hell of a throw. 
and anybody that's looking at this at home and say, oh, I could do that, you're not dealing with the wind out there and looking straight up at the guys under the sun and pulling all the line behind you, the ball that you throw. You can't just throw the ball, you gotta like whip it, you know, there's a real technique. Now I'm looking, it looks like the bow is falling off a little bit. I can always bring the stern back. So I'm just doing, I'm doing a, a right twist and clutch. So the port engine and clutch ahead, starboard engine and clutch astern, rudder hard over to the right. Now it's shortening up. Now what's happening is, I say it's shortening up, our bow is coming over to their bow, which is good. But the problem is my stern is coming out, but I don't really care at this point because when they put this line up, we're gonna fall back anyway and we'll eventually get to the right spot. I just need to keep the bow up there. So right now I'm all stopped. I've got the rudder amidship. They've got one line up. And I don't know if they're gonna put two on or one there. Depends on the tank. Uh, I'm coming down to the uh, lower half. See what we got next. And somebody else using our channel as well. Okay. Alright, he's gonna fall back and line up the connection and then I'm gonna wrap it up up here whatever he's in the spot. Okay, very good. Here we go. So it looked like the tankerman gave me two sets back. Or I guess three sets of ten fingers. But you know what? It's weird. Hey, ask the tank around the bow if he wants me to stop so they don't have to pull that line all the way up there. 40 feet. Yeah, I'm going to stop until you get that second line up there. See that second line? Once I do that, then I'll uh, keep coming back. See, by, by not doing that, it gets really... It gets really It's really hard for them to pull that line if they have to pull another 40 feet back. We say go ahead and slide on back. All right, here we go. Good job. So now I'm going to put my rudder amidship back on too. And I'm going to get ready to lift the stern off if I need to. Everything seems to be going good. We're moving back at a good clip. And don't lock that thing up. You let me. You, when he wants you to stop it, you let me know, and I'll help you. Because if you lock it up, we'll walk right through that line. All right, ten feet. So, so now we're just coming back nice and easy. Because if I'm coming back at a good clip like that, and he locks that line up on the fleet, okay. Now he's telling him to lock it up. So I'm going to take the way out of the barge, so that we won't snap that line. All right, it's wrapped up. All right, good deal. Just watch out for it. Make sure that you're not in the snapback place. <laughs> so if it sounds like I'm being a little, it's because I haven't, this is my first day working here, and I know that this guy is relatively new, and so I think it's better to err on the side of safety than tell him. I right, you're about uh, four feet and closing on your bow. He's about to turn on the captain. Very good, we're all good. Tyra. So now I'm going to write in the log. First line. I can check out as far as traffic is concerned. We're not in the traffic scheme anymore. Traffic from the Magathy. We're all secure. You can check us out. Thank you so much. You too. A lot of those guys at BTS. In this case, Gal. <laughs> anyway, that's about it. Um, some of you guys like to see these, but most of you guys, from here on in, it's kind of boring. It's just uh, they're just gonna lace this thing up like a like an old uh, basketball sneaker. <laughs> anyway, that's it. So. Like I said in the beginning, I'm back in New York, so all you guys loving the NYC content, I hopefully we'll get a bunch. Although this particular boat doesn't do a lot in New York. It does a lot. It runs to Portland, Maine, and it runs, I think, uh, we've got a load tonight that we're going to start heading up to New Haven and then Bridgeport and all kinds of stuff. But I should have all kinds of content that is not Puerto Rican content for you guys, and then I'll be going back to Puerto Rico and we'll have a bunch of that as well. 
So stick around. You guys, thank you guys so much for watching. If you if you get anything out of these videos, if you like to show some love, we'd love to have you guys uh, be on the Patreon crew. I'll put a link in the in the description, and you can always. Uh, buy my crew in Puerto Rico on our flight home you can buy us a drink by hitting that super like thanks uh, super thanks button <laughs> thank you guys so much patrons out there you guys rock you guys take take care be safe and I'll see you on the one